Hello there, a really warm welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, the title is, as you can see on your screen, Top Design and Storyboarding Tips for Your Retail Product Creation Process and in conversation with Darren Glenister, VP of Innovation at PTC. Here's the agenda for today's webcast. During the webcast, we'll explore some of the market pressures that are driving brands and retailers to embrace digital storyboards and other digital design applications. We'll discuss how a digital approach to design is transforming product creation and driving value internally and in the supply chain. And finally, we'll share some practical uses, uh, uses cases and provide insights into what retailers believe to be essential digital storyboarding capabilities needed to succeed in the current market, along with top tips to share your digital storyboard selection, sorry, to shape your digital storyboard selection. So, as I mentioned, today's speaker will be Darren Glenister, VP of Innovation at PTC. Darren has over 20 years commercial experience, having worked as technology strategist and innovator in the fields of fashion and design. As VP of innovation for PTC's retail division, Darren is responsible for PTC's worldwide retail Internet of Things strategy and works hand in hand with PTC's retail product management team and customers to bring game changing innovations to the retail and consumer products market. Finally, I'm Heather Thorpe and I'm from Just Style and I'll be your interviewer and moderator for today's event. So without further ado, hello Darren and thanks for finding time in your busy schedule to be with us today. So how are you doing today? I'm great, thanks Heather. Uh, actually quite busy because we have uh, live works coming up next week which is something I'm actually packing for directly after this to jump on a plane and go to Boston. Oh, wow. Uh, can you tell us about LiveWorks? Yeah, so LiveWorks is actually PTC's um, digital transformation conference uh, where we help different industries explore the outer limits of disruptive tech, uh, primarily focused on PLM, IoT, AR, 3D and machine learning. It's evolved from the origins of PTC's user gathering to what is now an annual interactive technology event with over 5,000 participants, which includes strategists, innovators, partners, analysts, and customers from all over the globe. It's a very exciting event, and it's on from Monday to Wednesday. Anyone who's out in Boston has a chance to go, and I recommend you do so. Sounds very exciting. So I wish you all the very best in your preparation. It sounds like you've got a lot to do. So, Darren, as someone that's, uh, that is constantly in the field, working hand in hand with brands, retailers and technology partners across the globe, could you share your thoughts around some of the market pressures brands and retailers are facing today and what you think is driving companies to move away from traditional design and product development methods to digital applications? Sure, Heather. We're actually seeing a huge shift towards uh, digital design and product development uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, it goes without saying that retail, footwear, apparel and fashion industries are in the midst of a massive digital transformation. The digital consumer and fast fashion business models have essentially redefined retail industry as we know it. Retailers are under huge pressure to compress uh, cycle times and deliver the latest trends to market at speed. Consumers are now shopping 24-7. They're sharing their styles on social media like Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And they're expecting far more from their favorite brands in terms of availability, personalization and information on sustainability. Over the past few years, consumers have experienced an exponential expansion in product choice and the ability to leverage technology to find exactly what they want. at The lowest price has become the norm. Retailers are increasingly trying to find ways to create and maintain brand loyalty. And now with omnichannel retailing and fast fashion as the new norm, Yet um, international supply chains are becoming even more complex and consumers are still demanding strong price quality value proposition. With consumers having an unprecedented level of product choice across multiple shopping channels, retailers are increasingly under pressure to um, deliver under very tight margins and sustain profitability. Bottom line, regardless of the business model, size and scope, all retail fashion, footwear and apparel businesses are confronted with all these challenges and opportunities in the, some shape or form. They're searching for ways to digitalize their organization and transform and constructing these sh shape up 
the way we've always done things. And to, most importantly, to compete on price and ensure that their businesses continue to grow. Great. So this next slide, um, I think, Darren, you're going to talk about some of the key points. Yeah, so these are actually some some key stats that we've uh, we've pulled together. So we've worked with um, some different partners. Um, so we, we've seen that uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Liam Fong is one of the biggest uh, supply chain oh, yes. groups on, on the planet. But um, the, 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 the thing that they keep saying is that shorter lead time, um, there's huge pressures on on commerce and actually fast fashion. So making that process is far more efficient. And then we're seeing a similar thing echoed from Accenture as well. Um, that the production costs are, are rising, so they're having to become more efficient with the way that goods are produced and the way they're moved around the planet. And then most recently with the um, Boston Consulting Group, we're also seeing similar uh, times now. I mean, we're actually seeing fast fashion is becoming faster, uh, production times are becoming shorter, and we're also seeing that supply chain and actually improving supply chain is becoming one of the most important things for any fashion business. That's great. Thanks, Darren. So during my uh, preparations and, and research for this interview, I noticed that PTC have invested really heavily in what you refer to as digital design. Um, for example, you have multiple resources available on your website on this topic. And I wondered if you could maybe explain to me what you mean and when you use the expression digital design. In other words, what does digital design mean to you? Yeah, absolutely, Heather. Uh, before I explain what digital design means to PTC, I'd like to step back and share some research with you. I think it's fair to say that reducing cycle time, as we saw in some of those stats and speed to market, is con con constantly on the top of everyone's mind. And in a recent study, it overtook uh, cost and the main business concern for brands and retailers. In a second study, which was conducted by the Boston Consulting Group, it was found that the time it takes uh, to, for trend to disseminate and hold and take value is, uh, has gone from one year to three to five weeks, as we saw on the previous slide. As a brand or retailer, you now essentially have three to five weeks to capitalize on a trend before it's gone. So interestingly, design and development is seen as one of the biggest factors of having an impact on speed to market. For example, Kurt Salmon recently did a study of retailers and brand owners who asked to identify factors that positively and negatively impact speed to market. As you can see, design and development have negative impacts. So the question is, how can that be improved? Um, simply by using digital design tools, of course, and actually improving the processes around them. So what is digital design? In other words, it's actually digital product creation. It's essentially about replacing and enhancing the physical processes across three major areas, specifically ideation, design, and development. So in terms of ideation, we have what we call um, a digital mood board. And a digital mood board is a way of actually uh, collaborating and connecting ideas in a digital space. Additionally, we have improved design process processes around 2D design, in particular around uh, Adobe Illustrator. So working within Adobe Illustrator to uh, create multiple colorway tools, for example, using AI plugins, um, connecting directly into the PLM system. So making it easier for the designer to get those sketches into PLM, which, which in turn saves time. And then lastly, which is one of the, the biggest areas we're seeing um, interest in now is, is 3D. So using software like Clo and Browseware and uh, Optitex to actually create things in 3D, which are photorealistic and ready for uh, injection straight into the PLM system. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Darren. Thanks for that. So uh, now that we have a, a good understanding of the market pressures that brands and retailers are facing today, and we understand what digital design is in the broader sense, I'd like to explore a specific component of digital design in more detail, and, and that is digital storyboarding. So as someone that was instrumental in developing and, and bringing PTC's digital storyboard solution to market, 
can I ask you to maybe explain what a digital storyboard is and provide your own perspective on why digital boards are such a vital tool for, for brands and retailers today? Yeah, sure. So we, we've seen how important speed to market is. And one way uh, companies are tackling this issue head on is to reduce the time between ideation and product creation. Um, in other words, how a brand or retailer significantly shorts the, shortens the time from idea to evolve to a real product, and thus how quickly you can get to market. This is where the digital storyboard plays an absolute key role. A digital storyboard is in effect a visually appealing digital idea management tool, which is, I know it's a lot of words, but I think that's the most direct way to explain it, that essentially enables designers and developers to easily capture inspirations, concepts, trends, requirements, and feedback in one central place. And I think that's the thing that's absolutely key, that everything is in one place. The tool works on a traditional desktop device. Um, it works nicely on a very large screen, but equally it can work on a touch device like an iPad. Um, using a digital board, users can quickly aggregate ideas and inspirations from across the enterprise and reiterate those with different stakeholders and making sure that there's full alignment on season product color, material, and the direction of where the product design should go. Users can create boards using images, videos, PDFs, Adobe files, Photoshop files, uh, Word files, in fact, any kind of file format that can be digitally represented. Users can also infuse trends by viewing and importing trend information. So trend is actually very key and actually having that available inside of a digital mood board makes it um, accessible and helps you build your story around the product. Within the tool, you can also create comments, and these comments can be on projects, they can be on boards, they can be on items. So there's a very granular level. You can also send tasks to put other people in your organization for completion. An example would be, what do you think of this color palette? Um, then you can actually assign that to someone, have someone review it, and then track that process. And then additionally, you can annotate, you can actually put lots of images on the board, you can zoom in and zoom out, and then users can easily share those uh, boards, uh, not only internally, but also externally. So you can share them with suppliers, with vendors, and that actually moves away from the physical foam boards that designers have traditionally had and allows for pure digitalization. And this ensures that the products come to market far, far quicker than was ever possible before. Fantastic. Right, at this point in the webinar, I'd like to invite the audience to give us some of their comments. So uh, just take a brief pause um, for the, the first of our two poll questions. So I'm gonna launch the first poll question. If I can get you all to just, um, it should be on your screen now. So if I can get you all to just add in uh, which of the following functions in your company would benefit from better collaboration and communication, both internally and with suppliers? If you can check all of those that apply to you, that would be great. We'll give you about 30 seconds and uh, then we'll crack on. Feel free to just sing while this happens. I would, but I've got hay fever. I can pack while I'm waiting. You're doing a great job. Fantastic. That's it. Thanks for collaborating. So, if I'll move on. So my next question to you, Darren, if I may, I'd, I'd now like to take this opportunity to explore how digital storyboards can actually be applied in the real world, so within a brand or a retailer. And I wondered if you could maybe talk us through a couple of example uh, user case studies, uh, user cases based on your experience uh, of working with PTC's retail customers on a global basis. Yeah, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is, is just general design collaboration. So that's actually where uh, a concept or a product is actually at the center of an idea. And this allows different people in the organization to collaborate with those. 
So the first thing you would actually do is set a brief and actually say what you're looking for. And then you can involve different members of your team to actually um, put uh, information into that idea. And that's where um, a digital mood board is, is very powerful because it means that rather than starting that process via email and uh, you know, pretty much playing email tennis, everything gets centralized in one place. And you can also see the, uh, the, the evolution of the idea. Um, additionally, the second area is actually sharing assets. So this is, um, a digital mood board is very good for visually sharing assets, putting them into one place uh, so everything could be seen. And those assets can be images, they can also be um, videos or they can be any kind of files. And then the, the last area is um, around social media. So social media is a, a great source of dynamic information. And a digital mood board is, is a great way of collecting information and sharing that within a group. So I'm sure everyone uses Pinterest and uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, traditionally, you have to go off to those sites in order to find the content and then somehow collaborate with it. But having that directly inside of the mood board allows you to uh, do that in one place very, very quickly and easily. I love it. It sounds just like the future. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for describing those user cases. That's great. So I understand that you prepared a, a brief video uh, in order uh, to demonstrate some of the specific capabilities of a, a digital storyboard solution. And I wondered if now would be an appropriate time to show that. Is that good for you, Darren? Sure. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yep. Fantastic.
That's great. I love it. <laughs> I wish I could do that with yeah, my thanks. Pinterest board. <laughs> so, Darren, thanks, you, is there anything you want to add to that video, maybe just to add some narration to it, perhaps? Anything? Yeah, my original plan was actually to narrate it, but I seem to be replaced by that rather dramatic music. <laughs> but uh, So I'll, I'll just <laughs> give you a few uh, footnotes. So I, I think, actually, it was quite evident from the video what was going on. Um, you can see, actually, how quickly and easily with a... a digital board you can you can collaborate on ideas you can actually create uh, product ideas and and share those uh, within your organization and hopefully everyone can see actually how much time that will save in terms of product creation so yeah I, I hopefully the video said everything it needed to yeah definitely I thought it was really good like you say very dramatic as well <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> okay moving on to our next question uh, Darren, so that was very helpful to understand uh, the use cases and specific capabilities. And thanks for sharing your, your insights afterwards. So in summary, what would you say are the bottom line benefits to the brand or retailer if they were to implement a digital storyboard solution? And what, what do they need to do to unlock the true value of digital technologies in product development? Big question. Yeah, it's a big question. But so the actual benefits are quite tremendous. Um, we're, we're seeing from our research and uh, speaking with customers that time between ideation and development is is now uh, being reduced by up to two weeks, which is which is quite a lot in this fast fashion world. Uh, the ability to develop greater alignment with social trends and consumer preferences to drive on trend de demand or designs is actually another benefit. The ability to improve communication and collaboration across the enterprise um, and also across the extended supply chain is a key benefit. So moving away from Excel and email and everything, everything centralized. And brands and retailers can improve internal alignment on season product, material, color direction prior and during development, which is also another key benefit. And they can strengthen the relationship with strategic vendors by easily sharing boards as a uh, uh, with simple to use settings so in, in an example that you actually just showed in the video the ptc uh, canvas as it's called you can actually set up multiple boards and share them with multiple vendors and allow specific vendors to see specific things and manage that easily from uh, the brand side and also we're seeing a, a far more sort of free flowing uh, creativity and design efficiency so it means designers are being able to just put everything in one place and then see that and it and it works and it actually helps inspire them and makes them think more uh, freely creative in a creative way yeah that's great so in in terms of innovation what will digital design look like in the future i mean i i can't imagine for one minute that it's going to stand still no ab absolutely not i mean it, it's it's uh i i actually I joined PTC about a year ago and I've been focusing quite a lot on other areas. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing now is re being involved quite heavily in Canvas. And I'm looking to how we can bring Canvas uh, into the next generation of digital design. I think we have a strong foundation there. We've added a lot of value. But um, if you look at you know, augmented reality, for example, uh, there's a, a great drive in augmented reality at the moment design is traditionally low fidelity 2d sketches which is pretty much done in ai there's a shift towards 3d which also allows for um, an ar experience and ar allows you to uh, see products that are created digi digitally or physically you know on the other side of the world and i think that that's going to become a, a very key part of the process so I, I think that also machine learning is going to play a, a big role. I think we can add more intelligence. We can start spotting uh, uh, patterns in behavior. We can start combining data from PLM, from uh, physical retail stores, and then actually bringing that data back into the design process as well. So I, I think that there's, there's a lot to come. Um, and I think that the future is, is almost here and it will be very soon. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to take it back to the audience as we still have you here. I'm going to uh, suggest another poll question for you. So let me launch it. These are the questions that you can see on the slide, but I'm going to launch it now and read it to you as well. 
So based on what you've heard today in relation to um, digital storyboards, can you uh, select from the ones that apply which of the following would benefit your organisation in the near term? So maybe the ability to capture inspirations and concepts, trends and feedback in one place. Um, ability to aggregate inspirations and, and rapidly iterate on them with stakeholders to maybe improve internal alignment on season and product colour and material direction. Um, the ability to share digital boards and requirements with your global supplier network to gather ideas, uh, candidates and feedback directly from vendors earlier in the development cycle. And also to the, maybe the ability to develop greater alignment with social trends, consumer preferences, to drive on trend designs. So it was really interesting to hear, you know, what you guys think um, and get some feedback from you. So I really appreciate you getting involved. Right, I think you've all done a great job there. So I'm going to close. Quick couple of seconds, anybody else? gone. <laughs> right, so uh, at this point in the webcast, I'd like to um, take a few minutes just to answer some of the questions that we've had in from the audience. So we've got a few that have come in, but if you do want to send in a, any additional questions, please do so now, and uh, I can ask Darren while he's here. So Darren, when selecting a, a digital storyboard solution, what are the top three capabilities that they should consider during the evaluation? I, I think the the first one is to ensure that it has um, the ability to deal with different kinds of files, different formats, um, and also being able to preview those in in a in an accurate way. The the second area is through a collaboration, ensuring that there's there's strong collaboration inside of the tool and then the third area is is ease of use because you want to expand the usage of, of a tool um, not just in, inside of your organization but outside so you want something that's very simple and easy to uh, get up and running across uh, different groups and different people right brilliant thank you uh, moving on to the next one I can see how storyboarding can benefit my product design and development, but how would it benefit my customers or end users? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I think the answer there is is that by using this approach, you're, you're going to end up with a, a far more efficient, fast route to market, which are going to be uh, with, pro with products that are far more trend led. So ultimately, they should be more in line with what your customers are looking for. So I think that's that's how the customer benefits, hmm. and also um, by keeping down your your time to, uh, to market and your production costs, or the development costs, then ultimately pricing can be more uh, flexible as well for the end user and the customer. Yeah, that's great. So another question I'll put to you. Um, is does your application allow users to identify ideas that have have the potential to become products and then maybe use those ideas to actually create a real product in uh, a PLM solution for example yeah so we one of the, the features that we added uh, several months ago was the ability to create a product inside of flex PLM which is our PLM system mm. so you can actually start by an idea and then create a product directly there and that means that you don't need to go into the PLM system to do that. You can do it directly from the from the, the board or actually from the um, from the image or the item that you, you want to use as a reference point. So that's all integrated into the PLM? It is, yes. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Um, could I ask, add last season's SKU retail performance or style level markdown history to a board to inform my decision deck making? Yeah, actually, at the moment, you can't. It's one of the areas that I'm focusing on quite heavily. So we, we have a, another technology, which is called uh, ThingWorks, which allows you to mash up data from different places. So you could actually take your uh, sales data, markdown data. And the idea is, is that we're going to have that as, as, as a widget that you can bring directly into, the, into Canvas so that you can... Uh, see that next to a product and that will actually be live i mean it will actually update in real time mm -hmm. and over time we're looking to add machine learning as well so it can actually help you with some of the decisions that you need to make 
Okay, fantastic. Do we have any other questions from the audience while we're here? That's an interesting one. I don't know whether you can answer. Um, how can I collaborate with my third party de design houses if I'm outsourcing the designs? In the same way that you would internally, you have an admin system, so you would just create a user. You would give them uh, rights. Um, there's actually different rights, so you can have access to just view boards or you can have access to create boards um, projects. Uh, so you would just uh, set them up in admin as you would another user. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we don't want to be talking about other solutions, but for example, if, if they have a different storyboarding tool, can the two integrate? Uh, we, that's something we've not really come across. Uh, other, other than the fact that there's, an, well, I mean, the closest thing we have is that you can export a, a PDF mm -hmm. from the board with the content, and that PDF could be then taken into another solution. But typically, we don't come across that as a, as a request. Okay. Um, this is interesting. I don't know whether you've already covered this, but um, what kind of connectors are required for Storyboard and Flex PLM, and do these connectors already exist? Yeah, so we, we already have Flex PLM integration. As, as I said, so you can create items directly from the board. Uh, that's, that's built directly in, so there's no connector. So it, it, the one thing you have to have is Flex 11 and above, which is uh, was the last release. It doesn't work on older versions of Flex, but if you have Flex 11 and you have Canvas, you can connect it directly to Flex. Sounds like having an Apple phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here's another question. Can data analytics from different channels, i.e. stores, e-commerce, et cetera, be integrated into the design process? Yeah, that, that's actually something I'm focusing on heavily um, now. So one of my other responsibilities is, is IoT. So I'm responsible for connected store strategy for our retail group. And I've been looking quite deeply into data that we can gather from stores, whether that be sales data or product interaction or dressing room data. And I'm looking for ways to bring that directly into Canvas so you can build an intelligent page that keeps updating mm -hmm. and brings content from different places. So uh, to answer that question, it can't be done right now, but it's something that I'm going to be working on to achieve. Fantastic. It sounds like you've got a lot on your plate, Darren, I have to say. Yeah, I, I do. Especially as you're about <laughs> to fly off to Boston. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, I had a question in about licenses, which I'm guessing you maybe can't answer now, but someone's asking about uh, the storyboard and the Flex PLM um, and whether they have to buy both licenses separately. Is there somewhere that you can suggest this particular question or this person goes to find out or, or to um, get the answer that they're looking for? Well, um, first, first of all, just I want to make something clear that you can actually use Canvas without PLM. So it's a standalone application so okay. you can get immense value from from canvas without plm but the real extra value comes in being able to connect it into plm and send uh, products directly into plm and also saving those mood boards into plm so a reference for them so that you can always reference back to see where the ideas came from which is very useful down the, the stage of uh, marketing um I, it, to answer that question more specifically it would depend geographically where that person is, um, they would need to speak with one of our uh, sales people who would actually be able to give a much better answer yeah. to that question. Yeah, I didn't want to put you on the spot any about licenses and prices, but I wondered, like I say, if there's anywhere that you, you could suggest, and that would be great. I do have yeah. some resources that I can show to the audience very shortly, just so that they can find out a little bit more about PTC. So if there's no more questions, I think we've exhausted all the questions that we've had today, which is brilliant. Thank you very much for sending in your questions today. That's been really helpful. So um, as I did indicate earlier, this session is being recorded and will be emailed to you all and to anybody that's registered uh, following the event, probably within maybe a week or so. Um, so I really want to say a big thank you to Darren for, for making uh, this such an informative session, um, given the, the, the amount of work you've got on your plate as well. 
Thank you to our audience for participating in today's session. It's, it's great to see people taking part, sending in questions, filling in the polls. And we really hope that you found this session um, invaluable and helpful and will return to see any future PTC webcasts. So thanks again. But yeah, thanks, before everyone. I go, there is more. Um, I would like to invite you just to check out uh, a few of the latest research on what digital storyboarding capabilities retailers are looking for, uh, as well as how this technology can help you by accessing, accessing this, this following information. I'll leave this on the screen just for a little moment so that you can take down these details, but this might help to answer some of the questions that you've got or at least put you in touch with PTC. If you do have any other questions following the event, you're always welcome to get in touch with myself. Um, you'll have my uh, contact details already, but I can forward any questions that you have through to PTC if you don't manage to get through to them today. Um, thanks again to you, Darren, and thank you all for joining us today. And we hope that uh, this has been really useful. Happy travels as well, Darren. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good life, work. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care. Thanks all. Bye. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.